بسم الله والحمد لله ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام Okay, so let's just do a quick revision um, So those who want to answer the questions or take part, raise your hands so I can ask you Okay. Raise your hands, raise your hands. And we need more, more people than just two people. We've got Yunus, we've got Sabri, Naima, Naila, Aisha. We haven't answered it, asked any questions yet. Just want you to raise your hand to answer the questions. Okay, so Asia, when you wake up in the morning, the dua you say is what? Alhamdulillah. No. Why do you, um why do we say this dua? So what what does Shaitan do at night, Asia? Okay, so at night. Shaitan ties three knots at the back of your head with one and says the night is long, so keep on sleeping. If you wake up and say Alhamdulillah, one night, one knot is undone. If you perform ablution, another night, knot is undone. And then when you perform Salah, another knot is undone. And then the person's day will be joyful and trusting. Good, excellent. And Luqman? Before you enter the toilet, we say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khaba'ith. Which means, Oh Allah, I seek help or refuge from, from the male and female devils. Um, and Luqman, when you leave the toilet, you say? Ghufranaka. Good. Um, so we all know the dua. Before we perform the wudu, we say Bismillah. When we finish the wudu, Umar, what do we say? Umar always. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم جعلني من التوابين وجعلني من المتطهرين. Good. So we've woken up, we gone to the bathroom, made wudu, said the dua after the wudu, the wudu, and then we perform the salah. So we were talking about last week. We done the first few. Uh, adhkar after the prayer so when a person he f he says the taslim ibrahim what does he say astaghfirullah three times three times astaghfirullah 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 and ibrahim what does he say after that um allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta liya tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram good allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram good and the next one um sabri it starts with la ilaha illallah Um, yeah, carry on. Allahumma la. Do you know the rest? Allahumma la mani. Um, no. Okay. Who knows that that part? Uh, Aisha. 
اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد Good And Yeah, we mentioned and the other dua Who knows the other dua? Asya, do you know it? So it starts with La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, just like the previous one. Um, um, it's La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulk, walahu al hamd, wahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Then it's La hawla. Can I complete it? Yeah, complete it. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. La ilaha illallah. Wa la na'budu illa iya. Yep. Lahu ni'ma. Good. Wa lahu al-fadl wa lahu al-sama'u al-hasan. Lahu ni'ma wa lahu al-fadl wa lahu al-sana'u al-hasan. And then the last part was... لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون good then we came to the the saying of سبحان الله الحمد لله and الله أكبر So we came to this part, which was Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar, 33 times each. 33 times each. So we say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and La ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar, 33 times each. Okay, and what is what you know? How do we count these? With our fingers? Yeah, so you usually count them on your fingers. And there's different ways of doing it, which we can't show, obviously, at the moment. So uh, in our prayer course, we also mentioned that it is it is authentically reported that the Prophet ﷺ would say these also 10 times each. 10 times each. And we... And we we mentioned that um, if a person is very young and they find it difficult, for example, or if a person might be in a rush after the salah, so the least the person can do is to say these 10 times each. And he still would have fulfilled the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, if he said them 10 times. But it is obviously, it is always better to say them 33 because the more times you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, the more reward you get. But if a child is very young, at least the first you should teach them how to say it after the salah, just 10 times each. Okay. And then after saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, then we would say again, uh, the same dua we've, we've done Above, la ilaha illallah wahdahu. So the first one, when he, when he says this, he finishes off by saying, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. So just to go back, so we say, astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma anta as-salam, wa minka as-salam, تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معتي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله 
لا إله إلا هو ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون And then we start the dhikr of Subhanallah 10 or 33 times Alhamdulillah 10 or 33 times Allahu Akbar 10 or 33 times And then we say at the end لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير Okay, so I hope that is clear and that everybody learns that. Okay, it's just a little bit of effort to put in whilst you're young and you'll never regret it. Okay, for the rest of your life, you'll be saying the dhikr of the Prophet or the adhkar of the Prophet after the salah correctly. Okay, as there, there are many people, as we mentioned previously, who don't, there are people who don't say this at all. So when the, when the imam in the salah, he says, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, they stand up straight away and start doing sunnah and nawafil. And that's not what the Prophet ﷺ uh, taught us. Or people may, they'll just straight away say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. They'll do the Subhanallah, Allah Akbar, la, um, Alhamdulillah 33 times. And they think that that's it. Okay, so learn these and you'll you'll be learning the sunnah of the way your Prophet ﷺ taught you to do dhikr after the salah. And then after the salah, also when we finish that, we can read, or we, so we all should read Ayatul Kursi. Because Ayatul Kursi, as we mentioned, it is what? The greatest ayah in the Quran. It's the greatest ayah in the Quran. It's the greatest ayah, in the greatest surah, in the greatest book, revealed to the greatest prophet, from the greatest angel. In what? In the greatest night of the year, in Laylatul Qadr. In Laylatul Qadr. So everything. Naam. So... Ayatul Kursi. Okay, who knows Ayatul Kursi? If you raise your hands, who knows Ayatul Kursi? Okay, Naila, Asiya, Naila, Muhammad. Who else? Type one if you know Ayatul Kursi. Good. Okay, so if you don't know Ayat Kursi, then now is your chance to learn Ayatul Kursi. Okay, let's test to see who knows it. Okay, uh, Naila, do you want to read Ayatul Kursi? Um, yes. A'udhu billah minash shaitan al-rajim. الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأقذه سنة ولا نوم لهما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء إلمه إلا بما شاء وَسِيَ كُرْسِيَهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَأُودُهُ هِفْرُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْأَلِيُّ الْأَغِيمِ Good. Asya? أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَا Okay. ولا خلفهم 
ولا يفيدون شيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسيا كرسيه السماوات والأرض وهوده إدما فهو العلي العظيم Excellent. Luqman? Sabri? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyu. لا تأخذه لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يهيدون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وفي كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم. Excellent. Well done. Okay, so remember we mentioned oh, that Ayatul Kursi is the greatest ayah in the Quran. And the narrations mention of the Prophet وسلم, that whoever reads it after every salah, he will receive protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So protection from jinn who will try to harm from evil eye. Does anybody know what evil eye is? What, what does evil eye mean? Is it jealousy? Yeah, it's based upon jealousy, yes. So evil eye is literally, um, you may be good or you may have something that's nice. And the other person, that uh, he can be jealous of that which you have. And it could be many things. It could be, um, you may have, Allah has given you a skill. You may be able to read very nicely. You may be able to write. You might be very intelligent. Or a person, maybe handsome or be pretty. And another person looks at that person and affects him with what it's known as al-ayn, the evil eye. And it's literally like one of the scholars, Ibn al-Qayyim, mentions. It's like a bow. You know, you have a bow and arrow. And let's say you put an arrow and you shoot it at a person and that arrow sticks in the person. This, it works the same way that a person uses his eyes and affects you. It's like them shooting something at you and it, start, and it harms you only by Allah's permission. And this happened at the time of the Prophet وسلم, that there was a companion and he was washing. And so he was washing his, his body. And one another person saw him and he saw that he was he was very strong and big. And he mentioned about him being strong and being big, like he, he had a lot of strength, like maybe maybe he was muscular. And when he mentioned it, the person fell on the floor. The, the companion, he fell on the floor and he became very weak after him being strong. He became very weak. So they took him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet mentioned, like, did anybody say anything whilst he was bathing? And they mentioned, yes, such and such said it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he called that person to come, he said to him, Why didn't you make dua for the person? That when you see something you like and it amazes you, say Allahumma barik. Barakallahu fika, barakallahu fiki. If it's a woman, okay, that you're supposed to mention the baraka, the blessings of Allah on that person. Okay. 
and then what the Prophet Sallallahu so that person was affected literally by the evil eye of the other person. So the Prophet told the person who gave the evil eye, the person who looked at him in amazement and he didn't say anything, he told him to make wudu. So he made wudu with the water in a bucket and the Prophet took that water and he poured it over the person who had been affected by the evil eye and he stood up as if nothing happened to him. So that was the 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 sickness and the cure at the time. Uh, that's the sickness, the person getting affected with evil eye, and the cure is that them performing wudu, and then you take the water which they perform the wudu, and you pour it over the person who has been affected. So this, as we said, can be done, and it's very common for people to be jealous of other people. Okay, it might be for anything. It might be for maybe some nice uh, item of clothing that you're wearing, or maybe you have something new, and somebody is jealous of it. Or sometimes it, it it it's not jealousy as well. Sometimes a person can do it without even knowing. They just don't say, like as we said, say Allahumma barik. Okay, so a person could be affected. So that's why it's important for us. Because you don't know, it could be a stranger in the street that may does this to you. So you protect yourself. Always by reading Ayatul Kursi in the morning, in the evening, and after every prayer. It's very easy to, to read. So we say, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyu al qayyum. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم So if, if you're memorizing it then you can memorize it as, uh, in parts so um, it may look like a lot, but it's very easy. So first of all, you start memorizing by saying, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. That's the first part to hear. When you memorize that part, then go on to the next part. So you say, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. And then you read. So that's to there. And then you, then you add to it. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. And then the, the third part له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. So now you've done three. من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه. Four. يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم. Five. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ 6. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ 7. وَلَا يَأُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ 8. So you can memorize it in 8 parts and just do it slowly but surely. So if you, so what you should do if when you have this booklet, if you if you um, if you print it at home, and you have this by you when you're praying, and every time you finish the salah, you read them in order. Within maybe one week, you will have memorized all of it. So the best thing to do: write it out or print it, and every time you pray, just look at it. And within a week or a couple of weeks, you will have finished it. Okay. So that's Ayatul Kursi. And then we have the last part, the Mu'awwadat. Who knows what, what, what is Mu'awwadat? The three Quls. Yeah, they're known as the, the three Quls because they all start with Qul, 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 which means say, 
which means قل means say. So the mu'awwadat are the surahs that you seek Allah's help and you seek Allah's protection with. Okay, so they're known as ikhlas, falaq an-nas. So falaq an-nas were revealed to the Prophet وسلم, by which angel? Jibreel. Jibreel, naam. Who knows why they were revealed to him? Anybody know why? What's there was this? Because every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many of the ayahs in the Quran, Jibreel came down with ayahs from the Quran. For what reason? I know. The Prophet Sorry, when he was sick. Read. Okay, you're talking about these. Now we're talking in general. Maybe sometimes people ask him questions and Allah would reveal an ayah asking them questions. Or sometimes someone would do something wrong and Allah would send down an ayah correcting the people. Okay, or correcting what was said. Okay, yes, Naila. So, Falaq and Nas, the Jibreel revealed them to the Prophet because of what? Because he was sick and a lady done black magic on him. Yeah, so there was a Jewish woman in Medina who done magic on the Prophet wasallam, And she done magic on him because she obtained some hair from one of his combs in his home. Okay, so remember when you comb your hair and hair is on the comb. So she done magic. On the Prophet Sallallahu so they would get, so what they do is they would get the hair and they tie the hair into nuts and then they blow into the nuts. So in Surah Falaq, we say, um, وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ So you ask Allah, when we read this, we're asking Allah to protect us from the evil of نَفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ نَفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ are those magicians who they tie nuts, for example, in, in bits of magic, and they blow into these nuts. So they will say like uh, evil spells, etc., and then they blow it into this nut, they tie it, and then they hide it away from the person. And the magic, by Allah's permission only, it can make that person sick. Okay, so this happened, this woman, she done magic on the Prophet wasallam, and he was sick up to the point that he couldn't stand up. And Jibreel, revealed the two ayahs of Falaq and Nas to the Prophet ﷺ. And when he read them, he stood up as if he'd never been sick. He stood up very healthy. And Jibreel also informed him that where the magic was that the woman had done on the Prophet ﷺ, that she had done the magic and threw it into a well. Who knows what a well is? Yeah. Yeah, it's where there's water. Yeah, yeah, a well. Yeah, so they used to use them in the olden times. They still use them now, obviously, in villages, etc. They have they dig deep into the earth where there is water, and they get a bucket and they put it down into the well, and they and then they pull the bucket back up, and it has water in it. So the woman she threw it into there. Why? Because it's a place nobody goes. Nobody goes into a well. So she hid it into in the well, and so Jibreel informed him where it was. So one of the companions of the Prophet went into the well, found the magic, and they destroyed it. Okay, so Falaq, قُلْهُ اللَّهُ هَاتْ فَلَقَ النَّاسِ is, is very important for us to read. Okay, very important for us to read. Okay, who's going to read Surah Ikhlas? Falaq and Nas. 
عشان كان يدي سماوي قوان آسيا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Okay, good. Uh, Muhammad Hassan, you read Falak for us. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falak min sharri ma khalaq wa min sharri khasiqin idha waqab wa min sharri naffathat fil uqad wa min sharri hasid idha hasad. Okay, do Surah Nas also. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس Okay so we should read these after صلاة الفجر and which other salah مغرب and Salat al-Maghrib. How many times should we read them? Times three. three. So we should, should sit there and read them three times. Okay? It doesn't take um, much time to do. And, and this is um, very important for us to, to train ourselves. Obviously, when you're young, is after Salat, train yourselves to sit there and not move until you've done them, until you've done the adhkar of the, the salah. If you train yourself from now, this is how you will be when you are older. Okay, so when we've done the adhkar after the salah, anybody have any questions uh, before we move on about the adhkar after the salah? There is, there is obviously, there is more adhkar that you can do in the morning and in the evening, but these are the most common and, and the ones that we should all know but there are more that you can add to as you get older yes Yunus oh, oh sorry someone else was that was regarding something else okay so then we come to the 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 dua that we say when leaving the home okay so Ibrahim, do you want to read it? Um, Bismillah, Bismillah, he tawakal, Alan, Adalahi, Walla, Hola, Walla, Kulwata, Illa, Billa. Um, Naila. Bismillah, Tawakal to Allah, Walla, Hola, Walla, Kula, what I la Bella, Walla, who what a illa Bella. Yes, uh, Mohammed Hassan. Bismillah, he Tawakal to Allah, he will a Hola, Walla, who what a illa Bella. Luqman Bismillah Tawakkaltu ala Allahi Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah Okay I need just two minutes Just to pause the lesson for two minutes And I'll be straight back So just give me two minutes Okay Bismillah, hope that wasn't more than two minutes. Uh, let's carry on. Um, Sabri, do you want to read the same dua? I'll try and get everybody to read it. Um, I can't read it. Yeah, let's get Sabri to do it. Can I read it, Ustaz? Pardon? Ustaz, can I read no, no, let's let's do Sabri. Sabri, do you want to read it? No, Yunus. 
Now Asia. Allah, Bismillah, Tawakkal to Allah, La Hawla wa La Quwata illa Billah. Good. So the the best way, one of the or a good way how to learn this is if you print it out or you write it and put it next to your front door. So and the best way, obviously, is to do it um, just to try and learn it. And before you leave the house or as you're leaving the house, then say this Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Or if you put it by the door and every time you leave the house, as I said, within one week, if you keep if you do this, then you will have memorized it within a week. So why do we say this? So Anas, the the companion of the Prophet ﷺ said that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says when when he leaves his house, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So it means, so the best mala is obviously in the name of Allah. So you are asking Allah to help you in his name. You're saying, oh Allah, by your name, I am asking for your help and your protection. تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ I place my trust in Allah. So when you go out of your home, you're placing your trust in Allah. You want him to protect you so that no harm. And whatever you're going to do, he's going to help you do that. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And we're saying that there is no might or power except by Allah. So when you say this whilst you're leaving your house, it is said to you that it is said to the person, uh, you are guided and you are you are defended and you are protected and the devil will remain like he won't come near you so if you say this dua whilst you leave when you leave your house and if any of the shayateen which you can't see from the jinn if they come to try and if they try to harm you if you've said this they won't be able to come anywhere near you so imagine if you've said all of your in the morning or your du'as in the morning ayatul kursi the qul the falaq nas ikhlas and you read this on top of that then you are protected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed that he will protect you okay whilst you're outside so nothing can harm you as you said when you go outside then you are prone to danger but going outside is uh, obviously, people can affect you with evil eye. Okay. So, when we leave the house, when most of us leave the house, in our times, many of us don't walk anymore, which is a shame. So, most of us, either we jump into a car or a taxi or you catch a bus. In any house, so the common thing is, is when we leave the house, we usually go into a vehicle or we're going to a car so your mother or your father owns a car so we usually go travel everywhere by car in these days so we're going to learn the dua that we say when getting into the car okay and we're going to finish with this one today so uh ibrahim do you want to mention this one Supplication for travel, car or bus. Or it could be train as well, or it could be an airplane as well. Or if you have a donkey or a camel or a horse. I don't know. Yeah, carry on. Supplication for travel, car or bus. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وإن إلى ربنا لمنقلبون. Excellent. Uh, read it, uh, Naila. 
الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله ذي الذي سبحان الذي سبحان الذي سخر لن هذا لنا ذا هذا هذا وما كن له ما كنا له كنا له مقرنين وإنا وإنا إلى وإنا إلى ربنا لمن قالبون. Excellent. محمد حسن ينوي لي. سبح الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا ما كنا له مقرنين وإنا إلى ربنا لمنقلبون. Excellent. يونس ينوريد. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وإنا إلى ربنا لمقلبون. Excellent. Can you read the English as well? Yunus. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. How perfect He is, the one who has placed His chance for our service, and we ourselves would not have been capable of that, and to our Lord's final destiny. No. So, in the du'a, in this du'a that we say, Subhanallah, sakhara lana hada. So, we say, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest uh, three times, and we've discussed this. So we say, how perfect he is, Allah. Alladi, the one, sakhara lana hada, who has given us or placed this transport at our service. Because everything we have is from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before, before we had uh, planes and before we had cars and bikes, what, what did people used to use for transport? Camels, horses, donkeys. Donkeys. They used to use donkeys, camels, what else? Horses. Horses. So they used to use cattle. Usually they used to use cattle and obviously, as we just mentioned, donkeys and horses, etc. So it, it is from Allah's blessings upon humans that he made animals and everything is useful. So the animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has made them and it's they are the creation of Allah which we as humans, we benefit from. So for example, how do we benefit from, from like a cow, for example, or a bull or... So is it just that we ride them? Good. So yeah, so we benefit... Everything has a use and a purpose why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Everything in the heavens and the earth, from the smallest to the largest thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for a purpose and a wisdom. Whether we know that wisdom or not, okay, that there is a great wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. <clears throat> it's just that we don't know enough why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created little and all the various things in the heavens and the earth. Okay, but so we, we praise Allah because he made these types of things for us. So even like now, cars, planes and trains, etc. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us the ability to make such things. Okay, and everything is created like cars, Cars are made out of materials which Allah created. He created the materials and he created the human's brain and he gave them the intelligence and the ability to make those things. So it's not like mankind has evolved and now we are very intelligent and now we don't have any need for a to worship. No, we are more a need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and we can see the great intelligence that he's given people that they've made cars and planes all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we go on a car or a bus or a train or any mode of transport we say this dua and we're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we say he's the one who placed this transport for us and we ourselves we are, we are not capable of that we are not capable of doing these things but it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us these things as a blessing for us and and to our lord wa inna ila rabbina lamunqalibun and we remember that it is Allah who we will return to just like when we woke up what do we say Alhamdulillahilladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur So the last part of that and is and to him is the final resurrection meaning we are reminded from the time we wake up that we praise Allah and we remind ourselves in the morning that we're going we are going to return to Allah so this should make our day um, as useful as possible so if we wake up in the morning and we say the dua and we say wa ilayhi nushur to Allah is the final return that reminds us to make use of the day that we should spend the day like doing things that are beneficial for us it doesn't mean you can't have fun but ultimately we should we should try every day you should you should you should try and learn something new, at least something new every day. And it, and it's good if that is something to do with Islamic knowledge, but even if it's some other type of knowledge that you have made some use of your day, you've learned something new. Okay, and it, we should all try to learn something new every day. So maybe some uh, common facts by reading um, books that are beneficial to us. Even birds, yes, Na'ila. Because, okay, Na'ila, you like to read about birds. So what what is it? Why do you read about birds, Na'ila? I think they're quite unique and I quite like them. Okay, and um, how do you, so you, Na'ila, Obviously, you're a Muslim, Muslimah, and you read about birds, and you love reading about birds. But how does that help you as a Muslim reading about birds? What benefit do you get? Um, maybe makes Allah peace. It makes what? Sorry. Allah peace. Say that again. So I didn't hear you. It makes. I said maybe. Um, it makes a lot pleased. Makes a lot pleased with you. Yeah, but why? Anybody? Can anybody answer? Um, would it be because it's like it's amazing? You see, you're wondering. How could Allah like create this or something? Yeah, so Naila, when you look at the birds and the different shapes and the different sizes and the different abilities that birds have, does that what does that make you say to yourself or you say it out loud? What does it make you say? Subhanallah. You say Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. You praise Allah. As, and you realize that, you know, some people say that the heavens and the earth, they, they, that there isn't, they say there is no creator, that nothing made the heavens and the earth. They say it just happened by itself. Okay. But when things, and they say it started with a big bang. And uh, so basically everything exploded and there was no creator. But, when if we see a house that is that blows up or a car blows up, 
Does it produce beautiful things? No. No. It's chaos and destruction. But when they said there was a big bang, then how do we have such perfect things in the heavens and the earth? Meaning that the sun rises and it sets the same time every day. The moon comes up and it's never the, the sun is never late and the moon is never late. It comes in the same cycle all the time. And as Nati said, if you look at all of the different the creation of the different types of animals, so she loves birds. And so she looks at the different, their talons, their beaks, their wingspan, how they can fully say, she be like, there has to be an amazing, if something is so perfect uh, or so amazing in its creation, then it means that there is someone who is great at designing and creating that thing. So if you're amazed at something in the creation, you should be more amazed at the one who made that thing. And remember, it's not just, so she looks at one bird, she looks at many birds. And from and that's just one type of species from the birds. And there's, there's hundreds of different types of birds. And then we have insects, and then we have reptiles, and then we have all the, the mammals, and et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all of them, and it wasn't difficult for him to do that. Okay, any questions before we start? Ustad, I got Just... a question. Who said that? Sit. Hisham. Yeah, carry on. Um... Do you know when you go to Mecca, uh, are you um, are we having an Arabic lesson next? Um... No, so the lessons will be put on pause for a couple of weeks. We will announce when they were, were starting. So recordings. Pardon. Like, what would the um lesson be put on? Sorry, I didn't. I couldn't hear you. You know, the Speak up a bit. Be put on what? So I still can't hear you. Just you gotta speak up louder. The le- do you know the lessons? Yeah. What, what are they gonna be put on? You mean the lessons we've already done? No lessons like the lessons after, like you said that one. Yeah, yeah. On just on the. It'll be the the maximum of two to three weeks. I'll be traveling for about two or three weeks. So um, your parents will receive the the message when the, the lessons will resume. And so the most, lessons, sorry? The lessons will resume when you're in Medina or Mecca? No, no, when I come back. Says, yes. Lessons stop. Are they stopping today? Sorry, are we? Yes. So this are is the, the last. This, yes, this is the last lesson for two to three weeks. We'll and I'll, I'll announce it on the classroom as well when it when we're starting again. So okay. in a couple of weeks, just have a look at the classroom. Says I have a question. Yes. You know when you say Subhanallah for the du'a when you go in the car, yeah. I heard you don't have to say Allahu Akbar, or do you? You heard you don't have to. May, maybe. I'm not. If if there is a different narration that you don't have to say Allahu Akbar, then that's fine. Okay. Um, Ustad. Yes. Will we be having the lessons in the morning? next week or not I don't think this is the place to ask that Ibrahim okay Zakamallah khairan hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay so as a reminder when I come back all of you should have memorized all of the adhkar after the salah, ayatul kursi, and you all know falak 
ikhlas and nas and the dua when leaving the home and the dua when getting on tran when um getting into transport okay okay start have a good day i hope